welcome to our future technology experience. This will take you through a journey in a world beyond 2030. So let's start off with a short video. In a world where everything is connected, the digital and physical worlds will blur. Everything will be transformed to a digital equivalent so that the consequences of a change can be seen in a virtual space before it's transferred to the physical world. This digitalized and programmable world will open the door to countless opportunities which will benefit industry and society. such as connected microgrids and biodegradable zero energy devices will help us take on our biggest common challenge, creating a sustainable world, dematerialize value chains, minimize footprints and build circular economies. With digital inclusion, we create a more level playing field for everyone. Excited? I certainly am. So let's now go and look how the future 60 network will enable that future. Come and see. So, welcome to our dome. And now lift our gaze towards the ceiling. We can see here examples of trustworthy networks will play a crucial role to enable secure and resilient connections among humans, enterprises, and mission-critical infrastructures. We can see how the network will extend to a global network compute fabric, where networking, compute, and data are intertwined, distributed, and made available to application developers through easily accessible APIs. With AI-based operation and optimization, the network will become fully cognitive, autonomous, and capable of zero-touch operation. And in the cyber-physical continuum, limitless connectivity will synchronize our physical reality with its digital representations. Networks will connect trillions of zero energy sensors. And where needed, networks will provide extreme performance, up to hundreds of gigabits per second. And all of this will be made possible through a wide range of technologies, spectrum, and infrastructure solutions. From radio stripes and radio dots in the dense areas and all the way to satellites providing connectivity to the deepest forests and the widest seas. So, how far have we come then with concrete technology exploration in our research labs? Here we will show four concrete demos. The first one is about the 60, uh, a digital twin of a 60 network. So my colleague Nicolas here, he's walking around in this 3D model of uh, Shista, Stockholm. So the Ericsson headquarters location. But this is, as you see, this is not only a visualization that you see. This is actually what we're running here is a real application through our 6G stack. Uh, so through uh, the, the 6G baseband, and then we are using a digital twin of the radio and the propagation environment of Shista. And that is what you see on the screen. And as you see, when Nicholas is moving around there, uh, the performance and the different K the KPIs varies here, so bit rates and so on. So this is what you're showing here. So it's real data transmitted through the system, except through the radio and propagation models where we use the digital twin technology. And this is very useful. We are doing this in our research on, 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 on 60. So we are using this as a, as a tool to try out and test features and, and so on in the digital twin. And it can also be used in other purposes, for instance, to train AI models before implementing them or, or get, having them live in the system. OK, so next demo. Here we show uh, peak throughput uh, of 60. 
and this we are doing in the sub terahertz band, so high up in spectrum. Uh, here, what we have done here is that we are using the same uh, baseband stack as we showed in the previous demo, but here we actually have a real radio. So here we have digital radio boards running here live, uh, as you can see. And uh, at this point, we have a throughput, as you can see here on the screen, of beyond 100 gigabits per second. Uh, and I can show you here also that we have implemented link adaptation and so on. So we introduce noise. First of all, you will see that the, P that the throughput goes down a bit and the system adapts. So let's move on now to the next one. This one, the, soup, the stunning 100 gigabits per second is fantastic, yes, of course, but we are running that in the sub terahertz spectrum, as I said. And that has its limitations. You can get this fantastic peak throughput, but you have very limited coverage. So what is more relevant spectrum also for, for 60 is what we call the centimetric wave band. That's 7 to 15 gigahertz spectrum. And that comes with other challenges. Here we have implemented again, and it's running real here, a power amplifier. It's actually two power amplifiers here. Wideband power amplifiers. And uh, they, as you see, can see here on the screen, each of them, here they uh, transmit uh, two carriers of 400 megahertz each. So with this wide bandwidth capability, we can flexibly place component carriers in this wide range of spectrum. So that is critical, actually, to get this implemented in this, in this spectrum. Yeah? So let's move on to the last example that we show here. And this, I would say, if 100 gigabits per second is on one end of the scale, this is kind of the other end of the scale. Here, we are uh, working on a scenario where we have like trillions of sensors all around us. Uh, so, uh, first part, use case part, we are working with researchers at MIT, and they have developed this, they, they have been worked with this, uh, with, you could say, sensor fibers that they have knitted together in this vest. So each crossing in such a garment, like the vest or this, this sweater, makes up a sensor which means that in this one we have thousands of sensors. And with these sensors in this use case, with this, not, with, this can be used, for instance, to detect uh, human interactions with, with environments, so for health applications and so on, to detect posture and so on. So, but in this one, the first generation of this one, it's cabled, as you see, but we want to get rid of cabling, and we don't want to have batteries. So here comes the other part of this one. So we, again, with MIT, we have developed this tiny chip that can actually, well, that you can see a close-up here on in the microphone, or sorry, in a microscope. Uh, so this chip is able to uh, harvest energy from the radio signal. We have radio signals all around us. So this can harvest radio energy and actually bounce it back towards the base station with information. So this means that you don't need any batteries. And with this chips integrated with an antenna onto this garment, this, this is one use case, but you could think of thousands of use cases with sensors all around us. And we don't want to place batteries in, in them, we don't want to charge them, and we don't want to cable them. So this is another key uh, promising capability of 60 to enable trillions of connected sensors and devices out there with no batteries. So that was a glimpse of what we are doing when it comes to 60 uh, exploration at Ericsson. As you see, we are already now preparing for a future beyond 2030 in our exploration. But I have to say, this is exploration still. It's nothing near to a product, of course. 